Uh, so Vixen 3 is just another alternative, um, and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. Um, okay, a, a bit of history. Vixen's probably uh, been around in various forms for about 10 years. I think it started life known as Comet and then uh, changed to Vixen, or, or maybe it was uh, uh, maybe it was a different development. They just used reindeer names, I'm not sure. Um, and it was fine for its day. It was, uh, it was developed in the do-it-yourself Christmas community, and uh, it, uh, it worked very well for the, uh, for the displays at the time. Um, it has problems, uh, the, the, well, the, the original version, or version 2, as it sort of stabilized at, or 2.1, uh, is, is, well, was a very stable uh, processor. Uh, uh, Synchrosur and it did, um, uh, did work very well, but it had its limitations uh, once the, uh, the technology of displays uh, changed a bit over the last few years. Uh, in particular, um, it doesn't handle R RGB all that well. It, um, it will do it, but it's cumbersome, so there had to be a better way. Um, so for the, uh, probably uh, about three years ago, uh, the uh, developer of Vixen, a guy named uh, Casey Oakes in the, in the US, he started work on, uh, on Vixen 3, and uh, it was a quite, uh, quite different concept. Um, but after, after 10 years in the game, uh, Casey has sort of taken a rest in the last, uh, last year or so, and the, uh, the Vixen team is now headed up by a guy called Michael Salloway, and uh, he's an Australian, he lives in Brisbane. So uh, Vixen 3 is, you, know, you could almost say it's an Australian sequencer. <laughs> uh, but there's actually, uh, the, the, the development has speeded up dramatically in the last six months. There's now a team of maybe, uh, maybe half a dozen active programmers working on it and uh, 20 or 30 hangers on, and I'm, I'm one of the hangers on who pop in with suggestions and, and do a bit of testing every now and then. So, um, the progress has been rapid. Uh, what, I, what I'll be showing you today is a very much a, uh, a beta release. Uh, we're right on the bleeding edge here, so if it crashes, well, well I can pretty well guarantee it will crash at some stage. Um, it's the, the particular version I've got isn't too bad, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, and Vixen 3, uh, how, what was the price, did uh, we say, did somebody ask? Uh, it's, it's actually, it's free still, it's free. <laughs> okay. Um, we start in scratch with a brand new framework, a brand new concept uh, of, of looking at the way you sequence. And the, uh, the idea of Vixen 3 is to try and capture the, uh, the artist's intent as to what they want to display rather than having to concentrate on uh, the fact that I've got this controller and I've got, I've got these lights and I've got to sort of somehow directly sort of sequence based on uh, how they're all connected together. You don't need to know much about that to start off with when you're, when you're designing your sequences in, in, in Vixen 3. Uh, the idea is to, uh, is to have you, um, uh, you know, rather than spelling out the details explicitly, uh, you want to tell the, uh, the software what you want to do and let it figure out how to do it. Now, this is not, not unique from what I've heard from LOR and OSP. They, they, they have similar sort of concepts, so it's, it's, it's not unique, but it is, it is different from Vixen 2, uh, where, where the, uh, the, the, the focus was on putting things onto a, onto a, onto a, a regular timed grid. Uh, okay, we'll start off with uh, this. This is basically, uh, I haven't, what I've got here is a bare bones, uh, copy of Vixen straight, uh, straight from the download onto this computer with no setup. So we're, we're starting from scratch using uh, this software. So uh, no, nothing set up in advance. We're, we're starting from scratch. So first thing we'll do is we'll configure some, uh, some elements and groups. So the, uh, the screen we saw in the background there is the administration screen. Uh, it, um, uh, you, you look at it and you think, uh, what's, that, uh, what's that do? So um, it doesn't look all that all that familiar when you fire up a sequence, that's not what you're used to seeing. So um, first thing we'll do is uh, put in some display elements. So uh, since we're talking about mega trees, let's, let's add a mega tree. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll start there and we'll just call it mega tree. So 
there you go. We've got omega-3 in the, in the list of, uh, of elements. Can, is that really on the screen? It's probably not. I'll, I'll try and explain as I go. So we start off with an element called omega-3. Now, uh, the, uh, the development of Ixen, as I say, it's, it's quite rapid, and there are things that need to be done. And what needs to be done here is for a wizard uh, to fire up and just set everything up for you, just with, uh, with the, uh, the typing in of a few parameters, and the, you hit the go button, and, and it does everything for you. And that will happen. It's not that far off. But for the time being, it's not quite there. So what I'm going to do now, on this, uh, this screen, we have an add multiple button. So I'm going to press the add multiple button. And uh, what I can do on this, uh, on this screen is, uh, is just change. You see down here it says new name with a, with a curly brackets one. I'll, again, you probably can't see it too clearly. But what I'm going to do here is put in uh, the name string for want of anything better. And uh, I'll, I'll generate, say, um, say, 10 strings. So I've got a, uh, a control here that allows me to just increase the number of strings, or I can, I can uh, uh, click up or down on there, or I can just put in the, the number I want in there. So if I type in 10, hit enter, and they've got 10 strings. Uh, hit OK, and there we go. Got, so I've got omega-3, I've got 10 strings. You say, well, yeah, fine, now what do I do with those? Uh, we want to add some pixels is what we, what we want to do. Um, and uh, I immediately drop out of there, so I'll go straight back in again. And we'll do this by adding multiple again. And this time, instead of using uh, the template up here that is called numbered items, I'm going to use a, a grid items template. Now you'll notice down here we have a couple of naming rules that allow me to define how to set up this, this grid. And uh, they're set up as, as numbers. Um, and if you look in the, uh, the name format in this box here, you'll see it says new name dash R brackets one dash C brackets two. And that's basically row and column in a grid is, is what it sets up for, for by default. Now I'm going to change that. The, uh, these curly brackets up here, the numbers in there, uh, relate to the naming rules down below. So the first one is a number sequence that starts at one, goes on forever if I let it, and goes in, in steps of one. Uh, I'm going to leave that as is because I don't need to change it. The next one is uh, the, uh, the second item on the list. is also a number starting at one, and it's, it's, uh, it's got 10 there. I'll make it different because we've got 10 strings. I'll, I'll just make that, uh, make it 12 for the want of something different. So I've got 10 strings, 12 uh, elements, that's 120 items. Um, I can click on the, the number to generate here, and it will just increase them as I click, or if I don't want to click it 120 times, I'll just type in 120. And suddenly I've got some items there called new name R1C1 down to R1C12, and below that I've got new name R2, C1 down to R2, C12. Now, that's not very meaningful, so I'll change the name. And we'll call them, uh, uh, I'll just call them um, Mega Tree String. And I'll get rid of the, uh, where's the delete key on this keyboard? Oops, that's not the delete key. There it is. Every keyboard is different. Um, what I actually wanted then was the backspace, of course, so we'll put that back in again. So you see, as, as I'm editing that field, the, the names in the, uh, the box above are all changing. So at the moment I've got mtstr-1, and I'll take out that dash because I don't want it. If my eyesight was better. Oh, I know it. It would be. It would be better actually. And the 
it will show up better on the uh, on the screen as well if we do that. So. Yeah. Okay, that's, that should be easier on the uh, on the projector as well. So, okay, um, I can actually see what I'm doing now. So, it might help. It may not. So, what I've done now is uh, I've got a, a sequence of names called MCS for Mega Tree String uh, One Dash Pix One down to Pixel Twelve, and uh, just just. Scrolling down there, you'll see that the uh, the string number increments for every 12 pixels. So we end up with uh, at the end, mega tree string 10 pixel 12. At the end, so, uh, so we've generated those names. I'll hit OK, and it adds those onto the uh, onto the list of elements in the uh, in the display there. And again, you think, well, that's that's not very useful. They're uh, they're all over the place. How am I going to sequence with that? Well, what we do is we nest all of these into a structure. So I'm going to uh, select the first 10 pixel, the first 12 pixels, by uh, clicking the first one, shift click on the last one, and then dragging it up into string one. So now you see I've, I've lost them down here. If I open up that tree, they're now nested under string one. And I'll do the same with uh, with the other strings. And this this. This will be a lot quicker in, the, in a later release. Uh, they just haven't uh, written the, the wizard yet that does this. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't actually take all that long. I'm just, uh, just uh, selecting them in groups and dragging them onto the, uh, the string name, and it automatically uh, displaces them within that group. So it's the same concept as groups in, in, in other sequences. Um, Just have to be a bit careful where I drop them. So there we have it. We have uh, we have each individual pixel allocated to uh, to uh, to a given string. And next thing we're going to do is just select all of the strings and drag them onto the name Megatree. And now we've just got one item that we can work with in the sequencer. And uh, we, can, we can look at the structure by just by clicking on the, the Plastos <laughs> standard uh, Windows Explorer type, uh, looking, looking at things. We can just open up uh, to, uh, to anywhere we like to see what we've got. So OK, there you go. That's it. We've, uh, we've, now, got, we've now got a mega tree. <coughs> uh, <coughs> So uh, next thing I'll do is I'll put that into a, into a preview so that uh, when we do sequence it, we can, uh, we can see what happens. So I'm going to configure preview. I'll click on add new preview. And there are two, two possible previews here. One's the old one. And uh, this is the new one. So I'll obviously use the new one. So I've now got a preview, uh, preview there. Uh, I need to now configure it. So I'll click on configure preview. and. It gives me a screen to allow me to uh, to place a background picture. So up the top here, we'll, we'll put in a background picture, and I have to find that. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oops. Sorry. If you're going to insult, you've got to say it loud enough so I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, mm. um, okay, so we're, we're going into the uh, Vixen 3 folder. And this, this is just wherever the picture is. So you can have the picture anywhere you like. I, I, I just uh, happen to know that it's, um, it should be in there. <laughs> Okay, so it's not. I'll pick another one then. It doesn't really matter. There we go. That one will do. So we've now got 
We've now got a, uh, a preview that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's my house. Okay, uh, that's a bit dark, so a bit light, so we'll, we'll darken it down, so same as you do in just about any other, any other sequencer. And um, so we now have a mega, a, mega, a mega tree in the list of elements that we can use. And to place it on the, uh, on the preview, I'll pick one of the objects at the top there. And uh, surprise, surprise, the tree icon is the mega tree. I'll click on that as well. So I've, I've clicked on the, on the mega tree element name. I've clicked on the mega tree icon. And now I can just drag it down onto the, uh, onto the preview screen, or the visualizer, if you like to call it, depending on your, uh, your terminology. So there we, there we have it. We have a, uh, we have a tree. Um, down in the, the panel here, we can change the properties of that tree. Uh, the, uh, we can make it a pixel tree or a, a standard string tree, but uh, it's, it's already decided that it's already picked up the parameters from the megatree structure and decided for me that's going to be a, a, a pixel megatree. We can make <coughs> we can make it a 360 degree tree, or we can uh, change the uh, change it to a 180 degree tree if we like. Uh, I'll leave it at 360 for the time being. Being uh, the string count is already preset at 10. The lights per string is already set at 12. Uh, we can change the uh, the shape of the tree. For instance, the uh, if uh, if you've got a, a very wide top on your tree, you can sort of change the uh, the shape of it by uh, changing the uh, uh, the top width value. Um, but uh, basically, there they you have it. You have a, a mega tree. Um, the other thing that I'll do is just change the light size to a bit bigger so that when we run something, you can, you'll see it better on the screen. Okay, so there we have it, uh, one mega tree. So I'll close that. Um, there's there's a, uh, a heap of other things we could have put in there, uh, but since the, the you know, mega tree is what we're aiming for tomorrow, then uh, I figure we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, hit the OK button, we've uh, configured that. The preview window will just open up a bit. And let's uh, put in a sequence. So we've got two types of sequence. We've got a, a, the, the normal timed sequence where uh, everything is, is placed onto the, the timeline uh, as you'd expect. Uh, the, the, the difference being that uh, the concept of a fixed grid timeline uh, doesn't exist. The, uh, the timeline is totally free form. You can place marks on the timeline to create a grid if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, there's also a concept of a scripted sequence where uh, you can script a set of instructions for, uh, for what the, the sequencer wants to do, but uh, we won't worry about that today because I've never actually used it, and uh, that will probably crash. Uh, so we'll, we'll pick a time sequence, and uh, there we have it. So we we have the uh, the editor. There's only one element set up, and, uh, so there it is, megatree. So we have a number of pre-made effects available on the toolbar there. So let's pick, say, a spin. A useful thing to be able to do with a, with a megatree. So I'll click on I'll click and drag on spin from the from the toolbar, and just drag it down to wherever I like on the timeline. So we'll start at the maybe the half second line, and it, it'll put in. Uh, it's a bit hard to see actually there, but if I select it, it's uh, it's a, a bit more obvious, and uh, you, you you can almost see that uh, it's it's put in uh, a some some diagonal sort of markers there to indicate what the uh, what's what's going to happen. Um, doesn't tell you a great deal until I double click on it, and it brings up the editor to, to edit the, the effect. So uh, to make uh, that, that spin by default, we'll just go through every pixel in turn, uh, which means you're only seeing one pixel at a time, which means you don't see very much. So uh, that's not very useful. So what I'll do here is I'll change the parameters so that the, the pulse that it's applying is, uh, say, 70% uh, of the total time. So I'm clicking on the. Uh, on the control there to uh, to bring it down to 70 percent. Um, I could I could uh, specify a, a fixed 
time for the, the pulse to last if I want to. Um, the, the pulse that is set up by default is a rising, like an inverse fade if you like. It uh, goes from, uh, from zero up to maximum brilliance over the length of the pulse. Personally, I don't like that. I, I like my pulses to, to have a rapid attack and then, then a slow decay. So what I can do is click on the, uh, on the, uh, the graphic there and I can edit the, the shape of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the pulse. So I can, I can drag the, uh, the line up to the top so it starts with a high value and ends with a, ends with a low value, like zero. If I want to change that shape, I can uh, control click somewhere in there and it'll put in another, another point for me which I can drag around wherever I like to, to change the, the behavior of each individual light pulse. So I've got a rapid attack and then a bit of uh, sort of uh, gradual dimming there. And uh, well, let's just see what that looks like to start off with. So I'll hit OK and you'll see that the, uh, the, the graphics changed on the timeline to, to roughly indicate that. And uh, I'll mark on the, on the time itself the, uh, the, uh, the length of the sequence I want to play and you'll see the, uh, the arrow up there indicating the, the range that it's going to play. Hit play and uh, if I had the, the preview visible you would have seen it. So what I'll do is I'll just reduce the size of, the, of that window. I'll bring the preview to the front and we'll try again and see whether we've got anything there. And there you go. We've got a, uh, we've got a, we've got a, a bit of a spin <coughs> going on. Um, <coughs> Let's, let's change it again. I'll double click and um, instead of a static color there, and then the static color by default, default is, white, it is white, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try and generate some color effects. So I've got a few, a few controls as to what you can do. I'll just pick one of them and click in the gradient box and this will now allow me to change the color gradient of what I see. So uh, this uh, this uh, control here indicates the, the, the point over the effect. So that's the beginning of the effect. I'll click on that. It'll allow me now to change the color. So I'll click in the color box and it gives me a color picker. So I can pick whatever I like. I'll, I'll just start with, start with red because that's a one click rather than fiddling around with sliders. So now it's starting with red. Uh, because I haven't got a, an end point there for, the, for it to, uh, to change to, it's, it's all red. I can now uh, you see the pointer changes shape just below the uh, the, uh, the bar there. If I click in there, it gives me another <coughs> another marker to uh, to be able to change the color. If I click on that one, well, I don't need to; it's already selected. I'll click in the color and maybe change that to blue. Hit OK, and what you see there is is a gradient going from from red to blue. So I'm now going to apply that. Hit the OK and uh, hit the uh, the play button again and now the, uh, the spin changes color as it progresses. What I'll do is I'll make it a bit more obvious by uh, making the, the light stay on a bit longer so I'll go to 100%. Uh, so basically the light's on all the time uh, just uh, starting bright and, and, and dimming off. I'll put in some more spins. Uh, there's a uh, control here to change the number of spins. The default is three. Let's make it, uh, let's make it 10. Um, hit the OK again and play and now it's spinning like crazy. Uh, so that was a bit overdone. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll spread, the, uh, spread the, the effect out over a longer period of time. It's just a matter of uh, dragging. I think, I think I saw that in the LSP uh, or was it LOR? I lose track now. Uh, so a lot, a lot of things you can do are quite similar between uh, sequences. Um, it, and it's, it's really just a matter of, uh, so now, uh, now we're spinning uh, 10 times. It starts with a red spin and ends up with a blue spin. Okay, let's change it again. Uh, instead of, change, in, instead of the, the gradient changing across the entire effect, um, let's uh, let's try something different. I'll uh, that wasn't very different actually. 
Um, I know what that was supposed to. Um, but I have to change the gradient quite significantly to, to make it actually appear. Um, okay, well, what I'll do, I'll get out of there and if I can find the... Oops, start again. I'll configure the preview. There's the mega tree again. And I'll, I'll just make the light size bigger there. So let's see what that does. That should make it brighter. Okay. Now, what's happening there is, is each pulse is, is going through red and blue. So it's, it's just a different effect. Um, okay, that's a, that's a spin, that's, that's pretty boring. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, hit the delete, and it's gone. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll drag a nutcracker effect onto the timeline. Yeah, we'll run it over four or five seconds. I'll double click on that, and what we have here is the, the, pretty well the, uh, the, the standard Nutcracker control system all built into Vixen. So um, I'll pick, uh, let's pick a butterfly. It's uh, an effect that you see, that you see a lot. Um, I can change, well, I can change the pixel size for a start so we can see it. And the slider will take me to different styles of, uh, of butterfly. The, uh, I can change the, uh, the, the chunks that you use. I can change all sorts of weird things here. And you just, you just play around with the sliders and, until you get an effect that you like. Um, you can you, uh, use a rainbow pattern for your colors or you can select your colors from the palette. So that's all red. There's a mixture of red and yellow, red, blue, and yellow. Uh, so, uh, or you can you just pick this rainbow effect as, as a standard, uh, a standard one, and it, it just shows you the changes <coughs> as you go. So hit OK, hit play, and yeah, they're, they're a bit bigger this time. But there you go, it's a nutcracker effect, straight into Vixen. In what half an hour? about a day behind. Okay, so well, the, the guy who's developing it, the, the, the guy who's working on this is, is uh, in close contact with, with Sean. Yeah. And uh, what, what's, what's happened is uh, Nutcracker has been incorporated into, into X-Lights and the, the, co the code for X-Lights is written in C++. The code for Vixen 3 is written in C-sharp. So uh, it's, it's similar but uh, different enough to be uh, a bit of a pain. But the guy who's, who's working on this particular part of Vixen has done the translation from C++ into C Sharp. And as Sean comes up with a new effect, he's just translating them uh, you know, with, within a day, a day or so. Uh, he's even now got some effects in Vixen as of a day or two ago that aren't, aren't even in Nutcracker. So it's actually now a two-way street. They, they're going backwards and forwards. So, uh, and Sean is, is, uh, is, is part of the developer group for, uh, for, uh, for Vixen 3. So, um, so there you go. Uh, Nutcrack effects onto, uh, onto Vixen. Uh, and I didn't crash it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, uh, yeah, I, I can crash it. I believe, believe me, I can crash it. I've been trying not to. There, there are, other things that, are, that, uh, that you can do, uh, like for instance, there's a twinkle effect here. I can drop a twinkle effect right on top of that nutcracker effect. And um, all it does is just merges the two, so it's playing the nutcracker effect, and suddenly it's thrown in a bit of white twinkling. <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing about sequences is, is they're often so complex that uh, you, it takes a long time to try everything. <laughs> and there's, there's a lot about this that I haven't tried yet. Um, but uh, uh, there's a few things I have tried. I've been remarkably, you know, once you get a version that is working, bearing in mind we're on the bleeding edge here, it's being developed daily. Uh, it's, it's actually quite easy to use. 
Um, I'm not sure whether I've got it in this one, but to one of the effects, um, that's the movie effect. It's already in there. Already in there. Th this, this particular version doesn't work, so, <laughs> so I, I want to actually try and use it, but as of, as of, as of uh, yesterday, it was working. Uh, it's just that this, this, this version is about three days old, so. So there you go. Um, we can be, you know, it's probably uh, a lot of other things that people are interested in. It's better done on a one-to-one. -one. I'll show you how, it, how it's done. Uh, and a lot of things that you might want to do, then uh, we might have to learn how to do it together because there's still a few things I haven't, uh, haven't even tried yet. Uh, you notice I, I didn't even uh, uh, put any, <coughs> any music on the timeline yet. Um, you do, do notice there that the, uh, the effects are just freely movable in time. There's, there's no grid there to snap to. I can put a grid on that timeline. I can set that grid up so that it's, um, it's synchronized to the bars of your music. It's, it's uh, just a matter of going through a process of setting the marks on your musical bars. And you can then set it up so that things will lock onto those, will snap onto those, those markers. Um, I think I've probably... Ah, the, these, these are developer releases. Uh, there is a, a new release version due very soon, 3.0.6. Uh, it's, well, there is, is, is actually, and it's well, that is, has, has it actually been announced on the RIC? No. No, it's, it's not out yet. It's 306 uh, uh, is it's still a release candidate. It's not an official one. In fact, uh, they, they did actually publish a 306, uh, but it should have been 30539 or something. Yeah, uh, they, they got the name wrong. Uh, so 306 is, is imminent. Uh, the, the, there have been a number of bugs, particularly in the Nutcracker version, over the last uh, few weeks. Um, uh, that's, that's why this, this, this version you can't even download, because I actually had to get the developer to send me his, his version as it was at the time that it worked. <laughs> but it's just, it is now just a matter of days, and there will be a uh, 3.06 working uh, for, uh, for the, the public to try out. But there will still be bugs in it. Not as, not as many as LSP, but no. <laughs> hey, uh, I think it's great. Well, this is it. it is, it's free software. It's free software, and, and for what it is, what it costs, it is amazing. I just like how smooth it is. You can add stuff in there. You can move along in your timelines. Yeah. That's impressive. And to be honest, uh, the, the, the developers reckon it's slow. They reckon it's slow. They're, they're one, one of the, the, the major uh, pushes for the next few weeks or a month or two is to try and uh, tighten up the code so that, uh, so that things happen faster. I mean, when, when you're adding you know, uh, 20,000 channels for, for a multiple pixels uh, display, then, uh, then it, it, it can slow down. But uh, they're, they're working on Yeah, it's, it's, they're, 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 that they will be working on that very shortly. Uh, one of the other issues they're going to be working on uh, very soon is uh, the, uh, that, that setup where I said it needed a, uh, a wizard to uh, set up a mega, mega tree. That again, that, that whole, um, uh, actually I'll, I'll, just, I'll just show you one, the way that, um, uh, well I haven't shown you how to configure a controller, so I'll just, just quickly do that. Add new controller. E131 app controller, okay, and uh, there you go, I've crashed it. <laughs> um, well, I've got, well, I've got an error message there, but it hasn't crashed. Um, I haven't, I've, actually, that's the first time I've seen that error message. It's only ever appeared on this computer. I blame Matt. I've seen the error message, but it's actually crashed, crashed. It's a user issue. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> so there we go, we've got an E131 uh, controller, uh, configured controller. Um, uh, da, 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 I have no idea what that means. No, well, that's, yeah, it, it comes up with a standard j one uh, sys setup screen, basically. So, so, uh, so uh, there you go, it's set up for 2400 pixels already. I'm not quite sure why it picked that up because um, it, it wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> but obviously it's picked it up from somewhere that I didn't, uh, didn't cancel out. So. No, 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 no. Oh, funny thing that, yeah, funny thing that. Well, 
Well, it was supposed to be. I, that, that wasn't supposed to actually be in, in that directory. Maybe because I pulled the, uh, the image out of a different directory, it might have pulled that there from there too. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, I've got to, I can configure the, uh, the, well, I thought I could configure the channels. Maybe if I select it first and hit configure channels, I've got zero channels. That's why. Okay, so, so I need to change that to 2400. There you go. I didn't crash it after all. So, uh, oops, I'm going to go back in again because I hit the OK too many times. Uh, wrong one. Cancel. Go away. Configure controllers. That'll work better. OK, we'll select it again. Configure controller. Uh, again, I'm uh, giving the wrong button. Configure channels. <laughs> and it's just name them uh, to whatever you, whatever you like. Uh, I can... I can update those, um, and what I can do is is select, say, uh, I've forgotten how many, um, there, there was how many, 50 on a string, 25 on a string. I'm just going to pick uh, 25 of them. So I've just done a, shift, a click on the beginning, shift click on the end to pick 25 of them, and I'm clicking now on rename multiple. And I've got this screen here, which gives me the funny curly brackets uh, that I can uh, use to uh, to change the, uh, the the naming structure. So I'm just going to call uh, call that a, uh, a whatever. Let's call it a um, uh, P12. Um, oops. Output, whatever, hit the OK, and you'll see now I've got P12 output 1 down to P12 output uh, 25 for the ones I've renamed. So you, you, not this, you don't need to do that, it just helps you to uh, organize what goes where. And uh, so uh, there you have a control setup. Um, now to patch it, this, this, this is the next thing. Configure filters and patching. And um, this brings up a screen that is that does definitely need some work. This is one area where they're going to, they're going to do some work. And uh, you'll see on the left-hand side in the blue, I've got the mega tree that, that I'm scrolling through rather quickly because uh, this, this is scrolling through 2,400 channels on the right-hand side there. So uh, there's not much of that is... Um, is the uh, the meg tree, but uh, what you can do here is uh, for for pixels you need to add in a filter to separate the logical pixel into three channels on the controller. So we've got down here color breakdown uh, filter is, is the the default. The only other filter you can put in at the moment is a dimming curve, but uh, we're not really interested in that. So I'll click add, and it's added a color breakdown filter for me. So there it is. I can move it around. I can, I can drag one way or another. Actually, no, it's a right click. I can use the right mouse button to, to connect pixel one to the, to the filter. And uh, you think, well, what's it going to do from there? So we, we now have to uh, uh, configure that, that filter. So I'm going to double click on it and apply an RGB template. There, there are a number of templates you can use, different, different to all different orders of the of the, uh, the pixels you can make your own to uh, to uh, to give you whatever change you like I'll apply just a standard RGB template and it's now giving me three uh, three colored channels there I can I can add colors in there if I want to I can I can uh, put in a uh, an olive green channel if I want to uh, there's, uh, there's no reason why I would want to in this case so I'm going to delete it again so the standard RGB is what I want hit OK and now I've got three uh, nodes on the output of that, that filter. I can now, with the right mouse button, I can connect those to whatever pixel I, can, I like. Now, can you imagine how long it would take to do 2,400 of those? It would take forever. Five, six hours. Oh, or days or months, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that uh, filter again. I'm going to delete it because it's useless. I'm now going to go... Uh, it, 
patching wizard. Okay, let's make some room here, move things, oops, didn't need that. Come back down. You can tell my fingers jitter a lot. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to select the, uh, the sources that I want to patch. So uh, I'll scroll that to the, to the top if I can. And I'm just going to, I can select these with the, the normal technique of click and then, then control click to whatever you want. And again, that, that takes a while, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and as you, you may have noticed that as I did that, they appeared in that box on the left-hand side. So it's just adding, adding the, uh, the pixels I want to do. Takes too long in the order you press them, and, and I may need to do that for that tree tomorrow because I'm not sure how the P12 controls work. It may not, it may not work the way I want it to, so I may have to do a bit of uh, manipulation like that. But for the time being, what I'm going to do is just, just going to lasso them. In fact, I'll lasso it a lot. Whoops. So there you go. I've lassoed the lot. Uh, so on that box over in, on the left-hand side there, I've got the entire mega tree uh, selected. So I'll hit next, and uh, we've got the, uh, the, the filter addition screen here, so I'm going to add filter, and it's the color breakdown filter that I want. I'm going to select it and set it up. You have to set it up. First time I tried this, uh, I couldn't understand why it wouldn't work, but uh, I hadn't set it up. I'm going to again apply the standard RGB template, hit the OK, and uh, hit Next. Select the destinations. Now, I've got 10 by 12, 120 pixels there, so uh, I want 360 channels on the, uh, on the controller. And uh, I've, I've confused myself here now because I've renumbered some of them. 25, oh, that's OK, no. Just go down to 120 with the lasso. It just uh, scrolls if you sort of there we go. So on the right hand side again here, there's uh, 120 of them with, with different names because I changed some of them. Hit next and uh, 120. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And it's telling me that would explain it, wouldn't it? So we'll just go back. Um, doo -doo -doo. And we'll just scroll up to the top and we'll just lasso it again. And with this time, we'll go down to 360. The further you go off the screen, the faster it goes. So, oops, I overdid it. Ah, stay there. Okay, we've now got 360. Next, and now 120. Oh, I see what it's done. Huh. I've done things in a slightly different order there, so uh, I've, I've got it out of sync. I haven't broken it. I have not broken it, it has not crashed. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. I've, uh, I've still got my, uh, my source pixels selected. Uh, I've got my color breakdown filter. Whoops, I've added a second one now. Don't really need that. So I'll delete it. Just going to check that it's set up correctly. It is. And it still has its destination set up. And I'm not. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to do that just in case it's got out of out of whack. So I'm just going to click anywhere, and it just deselects them all. So uh, I'll select them again, and because I'm, I'm down at 360, I'm going to cheat and go up because it's quicker. Yeah, I think it might. But this is an interesting exercise. We'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. I wish, it would, I wish this would work in reverse, but it hasn't. No. Yeah. But that's one thing I might suggest they do, because that would be a very useful thing to do. Well, if you, 360. Okay. And it still doesn't like it, and I don't know why. It's yeah, it's, what I'm going to do, because uh, it's, it's, it's got a bit out of whack, and uh, so apparently I have broken it. <laughs> 
So I will cancel that, because it's so quick to, to do it again. I'll, I'll just start again. So I'll hit Patching Wizard. I'll select the entire tree. Oops. All right, so 120 pixels. I'll hit Next. Hit the, add the color breakdown filter. I'll set it up. Apply the RGB template, OK. And move to Next. The destinations I want, again, will uh, we'll just lasso 360 of them. Go back to the wizard. There's always a temptation to hit OK over here, and you don't want to do that because you'll lose, uh, you lose the ability to use the wizard after that. So now it's OK. Um, so it just got a bit, uh, uh, because I got it wrong, I should have started again then, rather than trying to correct it. So we'll now finish that. And bingo, it's, <coughs> it's connected. Now, it's totally unreadable, uh, like you get all of these lines that sort of go all over the place. I could have made that slightly more uh, readable than, than it is, but, but as it is there, it is totally useless to understand what's going on. Uh, so to individually change uh, or make changes to that is, is, uh, is uh, it's not possible. And that is why this particular uh, process is going to be worked on in the next, uh, next few weeks, because it is, it, it is uh, hopeless to, uh, to use uh, for fine control. But the, uh, you saw how long it took the, once I did it right, you saw how long, how long the patching wizard took, and we've got a, we've got a mega tree patch. Done. And if we connect it up, I'm sure it will work. I'm not going to try it though. <laughs> I think that's probably uh, probably enough of Vixen because Alex died to get onto soldering. Any any <laughs> any any questions before we uh, we uh, we move on? Yes. The, Oh, yeah, the, the intention is to have a relatively stable version out within a week. Now, I'm not saying that it will be bug-free, uh, but uh, it will be usable. Like Vixen, Vixen 3 has been usable for the last two years. Michael Soloway has used it for his display in Brisbane for the last two years, maybe even three, I'm not sure. Um, uh, like he's had to, because he knows the software so well, he's had to use a few workarounds to make it work, but the, the version we have now is vastly superior to what he's been using for the last two years. Um, this, this version right now, I reckon I could use for my display. 306 uh, will, uh, will be, cause I, I didn't actually crash it, didn't I crash it? I've made mistakes, I, I did not crash it. Uh, previous, previous versions, I could crash the drop of a hat. So it's, it's, it's relatively stable right now. because for the first two and a half years, the progress was not quite so fast. The, pro the progress has been uh, mainly in the last six months. And, uh, and it, it goes and fits the start. You can bear in mind, this is being developed by, by amateurs in the spare time as a, uh, a labor of love. Uh, it, it's not a full-time effort by any one person or any you know, other. It's, it's, it's a team of people who, who come in and they'll, they'll do a section of the code <coughs> and uh, you may not see them again for a couple of months until they come in and, and do something else. So, uh, <coughs> but at the moment there are, there are two or three who are, uh, uh, they do seem to be doing it full time <laughs> with the, uh, the amount of progress. And it is, it is really just a matter of weeks ago away from, uh, from a, a relatively stable, usable pro uh, uh, product and only a matter of months away from, uh, from, a, uh, from a very usable product with even more capability than you've seen today. Because I mean, the, the patching definitely needs some work and the, uh, the underlying engine needs some code tightening. But that will happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, the, 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 if you're using a dual screen system, it's, it's, uh, it's the only way to <coughs> the 
<laughs> you see, see two together. I mean, I mean uh, with, with higher resolution on this screen, we would have seen a lot more separated on the screen, but do you, then on the, on the projector, and my, my tired old eyes, uh, would, it would have been a bit harder, so. But I, uh, but I use a dual screen at home as well. Yeah, Vixen, Vixen 2 um, sequences you can import right now. Uh, the, <coughs> the process needs some improving to, uh, to extract, uh, in particular, information out of your profile. Uh, things like channel names and, uh, and, and uh, sort orders and things like that. It, at the moment, it, it, it examines uh, the, the sequence itself and makes assumptions about what you're trying to achieve by looking at the, the way your, uh, your pulses are, uh, are arranged. If it sees a slowly decreasing uh, <coughs> range of intensities, then it'll assume that's a fade and put in a fade for you. So, so it translates a lot of obvious things, <coughs> things that it can't understand. It just, it just says, there's a pulse there, I'll put a pulse there. Uh, but uh, that is another thing that someone will, well, they've actually started working on that right now. As of a couple of days ago, somebody's actually working on improving the, the, uh, the Vixen 2 importer. A lot's happened in the last couple of days, I have to say. 